This is my postpartum belly. However, we're not talking about six months postpartum. We're talking well over six years postpartum. Ladies, the struggle is real. So over the last few years, we have been inundated with news articles, research articles, news bits about gut health and what is normal gut health in this day and age. So gut health can definitely be a topic that is nuanced and can get very complicated. But for today's video, I'm going to keep it rather simple because I want to tell you about ways in which I have been working to correct or improve my gut health so that my gas, distension, bloating, all the things can course correct. So what I mean by that is I'm trying to improve my overall health with exercise and a better eating routine, a better diet, I should say. But then there are some things that I really need to pay attention to with regards to getting my gut microbiome and my gut health in check because that's what I'm noticing is one of those few things that have been slow to change over the course of the months and the years and so it's going to involve a little bit of a deep dive and I'm sure some of you might be experiencing the same thing on this channel I've talked about belly fat and you know our overall what's causing gas and distension and as we move on in our lives especially as we get older there are going to be some things that are going to cause us to struggle a little bit more not only our age, but our hormones play a role in it, as well as stress and a change in our eating habits. So that's what I'm going to talk about today, and hopefully you can gain something from this video. So keep on watching. So in a nutshell, the microbiome is the community of microorganisms such as fungi, bacteria, and viruses that exist in a particular environment. Although microbes are so small that they require a microscope to see them, they contribute in big ways to human health and wellness. They protect us against pathogens, they help our immune systems develop and they help us break down food so that we can store it as energy. Our core microbiome is formed first at our infant years. That's when we start to develop our own immunity. But this changes over time and can be impacted by our environments, the food choices that we make, as well as our exercise and fitness routine. One of the big things that we often don't talk about as well is how our gut microbes, microbiome, our health is affected by medications, which is something I will talk about today. So what is the risk of not maintaining a good and healthy diet? There are a host of illnesses that can arise when our gut health is not checked including inflammatory bowel disease or other sorts of inflammatory diseases of the gut, also cancer, cardiovascular disease, and obesity. Here are the several strategies to help you achieve and maintain a balanced and healthy gut microbiome. The first thing you need to consider is to eat a diverse range of food. This includes fruits and vegetables and different variety of plant foods that have a lot of vitamins, fibers, and nutrients that feed our gut bacteria. We need a healthy amount of good bacteria that can stave off the bad bacteria in our gut. Whole grains such as oats and quinoa and brown rice also add to the fiber in our diet and we need that to help us stay regular if we are eliminating toxins from our bowel and from our system. And I also talk about having a stash of frozen or canned food in your freezer or in your cupboard respectively so that you can have access to good foods if you're not always able to get fresh food. The second thing you're going to want to consider is to include fermented foods in your diet. And when I talk about fermented foods, I'm talking about yogurt, sauerkraut, kimchi, kombucha. When you're eating yogurt, for example, they have a lot of live active cultures, which are going to be beneficial for the good bacteria in your gut. And don't be afraid to liven up your yogurt. So get some plain yogurt, 0% milk fat, or vanilla yogurt, just try to make sure that the, the amount of sugar inside the yogurt is less and that you're getting a good amount of protein in the yogurt. So when I say less, a yogurt, typically if your yogurt has less than 12, 11, 10 grams of sugar, that is considered okay by dietary standards, the less the better. And with your protein, the higher the amount of protein, the better. So we're talking about if you can get some yogurt with like 15 grams of protein, that would be optimal. And again, liven up your yogurt, add some pumpkin seeds, add sunflower seeds, add some honey, add some hemp seeds, even add some fresh fruit or frozen fruit if you may to make sure that you're diversifying your yogurt and getting enough nutrients and vitamins and minerals inside the yogurt. You can also try to make fire cider vinegar and store it in your cupboard for not only getting that fermentation in but also staving off coughs and colds throughout the year, not only for the winter, but throughout the year. And then finally consider fermenting some garlic and honey. So you're gonna 
cut up some fresh garlic, cover the garlic over weeks. Usually this takes about two to four weeks to get all those nutrients, to get all the good beneficial things from the garlic into the honey. And then you're gonna wanna just take this every once in a while. Some people like to take it every day because there's benefits in both the garlic and the honey. And it's very good for you and your overall health and immunity, especially your gut health. The third thing I want you to consider is to consume prebiotic rich foods. So this includes garlic and onions. Both are excellent sources of prebiotics and they help feed your healthy gut bacteria. There are also other fruits or vegetables for example on the vegetable side there are asparagus and leeks and these contain high prebiotic fibers and there's there's also banana a convenient source of prebiotics that can be added to various dishes or just eaten plain you can add bananas to your smoothies to your oatmeal whatever you want to do but consider taking in a banana every once in a while to help you with your gut bacteria now the fourth thing i want you to consider is to limit processed foods and sugars We've heard it many a times. The research has also supported that limiting sugar is not only good for our heart health, but for our overall immunity. Excessive sugar can promote the growth of bad bacteria and yeast and avoid artificial sweeteners at a high level. So in the past, I tried to replace my honey with artificial sweeteners. You know, honey has a lot of sugar when you convert, you know, a tablespoon to the amount of sugar. However, when I try to substitute honey with artificial sweeteners such as stevia or monk fruit, I found that it was causing me a lot of digestive issues, which I, you know, nobody wants that. So the key is to experiment. However, if you're finding that your digestive system is upset with artificial sweeteners, try natural sweeteners and try your best with things like agave, maple syrup, honey, be diligent in the amount that you're using, whether it's to sweeten up your tea or to sweeten up your oatmeal or, anything, or your porridge or anything of that nature. I also want to mention that for you moms out there, I know that it can be tempting to snack on your kids' food as you're putting together their lunch boxes or getting their snacks ready, but it's going to be important that at this moment in time, if they're young enough where they like goldfish crackers or they like cookies, you know, to indulge and allow them to eat those things in moderation, but you have to figure out an alternative that is beneficial for you as you're aging. And then as your kids continue to grow in age, you're gonna to start to modify their eating or their snacks that they eat so that it looks a little bit more like the snacks you're eating. It's not to say that you want to purposely feed your kids bad food, but I do understand some kids, they do like the goldfish crackers, they do like graham crackers, they do like an occasional cookie, they do like the chips. So everything in moderation with both you and your children. The fifth thing I'm going to ask you to consider is to stay hydrated. Drink plenty of water. This is something that is beneficial for you because water removes the toxins from the body. Now consider adding an electrolyte to your water so that you are not completely dehydrated if you fail to drink enough water or you over consume water. It is possible to have your sodium and potassium and magnesium levels so low because you did drink a lot of water. However, this is something that can be rectified or modified by adding some electrolytes to your water. I will ask you to do your due diligence again and research what it is that you really need to stay hydrated and keep your electrolytes balanced in your body. Number six on the list, I'm going to ask you to please try and manage your stress. In a previous video, I talked about how rest and healing is necessary for the body, especially for us women as we age. And this can look like a lot of things. It could be prayer, meditation, going for a walk. It could even involve planting or gardening or sitting outside and just getting in some vitamin D. Rest and managing stress looks different for every woman. So what you're going to do is figure out what works best for you, what's going to help you with your overall gut health, and what's going to allow you to reduce those cortisol levels. When when our cortisol levels are so high and when we're so, so stressed, it does cause il illness. I don't know if any of you have ever recognized that when you were so stressed, your body just shuts down. And that's a way that your body is telling you you need to cool it. You know, you could get sick, you could get cold sores. You find that your immune system is not working for you. So again, there are some things you can do to manage stress, but also preparation. Get in your garlic, your onions, your fermented garlic and honey. Try to do things ahead of the game that will allow you to remain healthy as possible. Number seven on our list is I want you to get enough sleep. Prioritize your sleep and aim for seven to nine hours of sleep per day depending on your work shift. It's not always easy to get this time in but you're going to want to do your best. So 
again in a previous video I talked about ways in which to get that optimal sleep whether it's creating a luxurious luxurious environment or using blackout windows or perhaps taking melatonin or magnesium before you sleep these are different ways you can try and get the best sleep as possible and then again you're going to want to limit your use of the internet or your phone after a certain amount of hours limit your intake of caffeine you know limit the stimuli that will prevent you from getting enough sleep. So it's gonna be good for you to implement those good sleep habits so your gut can heal and restore itself overnight. Now the eighth thing I'm going to ask you to consider is to avoid unnecessary antibiotics. Antibiotics disrupt the normal gut flora. Antibiotics are what people naturally run to when they're sick. They think they have some type of bacterial infection when most of the times it could be a viral infection that does not warrant the need of antibiotics. Antibiotics, although they are used to treat bacteria, they also affect the good bacteria in your gut. So if you've ever taken antibiotics or you've ever given your kid antibiotics, you may have noticed that there might have been an incidence or an occurrence of diarrhea or the runs. You've noticed your stool pattern or your stool um, how do I say texture has changed from bulky to more runny and that's an effect of the antibiotics on your gut health. So if you don't need antibiotics and, or you are unsure about whether you have a viral or a bacterial infection, it's best for you to see a healthcare provider where they can actually diagnose. Oftentimes, again, you have a viral infection which you don't treat with antibiotics. You let it run its course and just use supplemental uh, things to help you get through like the teas, herbs, garlic, ginger, honey, different things that can help aid in your restoration and recovery from a viral infection. Number nine, I want you to please exercise regularly. So incorporate different forms of exercising, including cardio, weight training, uh, strength training, and things that can help you just get active and make sure your whole body, including your gut, is working itself. As we get older, we're going to need to be more flexible and more pliable because we're going to be aging. And so it's good for you to get into a set, into a place where you are walking, running, swimming, jogging, weightlifting, things of that nature that allow you to be as active as possible. The 10th thing I want you to do is to consider taking a probiotic supplement. Probiotics are different from prebiotics if I did not mention it earlier. Probiotics are food or supplements that contain live microorganisms intended to maintain or improve the good bacteria or normal microflora in the body. Prebiotics are foods that typically are high in fiber and act as food for the human microflora. And those are the prebiotics I mentioned earlier in the video. Overall, there are so many things you can do to maintain a healthy gut microflora, a gut, healthy gut microbiome, and don't be so overwhelmed to implement to implement everything all at once. Take it one step at a time and figure out what's going to be best for you. I would encourage you to, if you're not already on a fitness routine, to start a fitness routine. That's going to be beneficial in addition, not only to your gut microflora, but for your overall health. I also want you to consider modifying your diet so that you are slowly implementing things that are healthy for you. Your hormones are going to be shifting radically radically over the next few years, especially if you're over the age of 40. So it's gonna be really important for you to maintain a healthy diet that is providing you nutrients, that is gonna be good for your brain health, for your heart health, for your muscles, and for your bones. So if you're not getting in vitamin D or calcium, consider eating vitamin D or calcium rich foods or also taking a supplement. Same thing with your heart health. If you are eating processed and packaged foods, you're going to want to switch over to eating whole grains, vegetables, low glycemic foods that are going to be really beneficial for you, especially as you're aging. Now, as for me, although I still look this way and this is how I looked when I was actually fasting for a few hours during the day. It's a work in progress although my diastasis recti has been closing um, pretty well over the few years. It's still going to take some time for me to figure out what's triggering my bloat and gas as well as how to lose a lot of body fat. 
I am currently sitting at a high body, body fat percentage and so that's what I'm currently working on with my strength training routine. It's taken some time but I have dropped a few pounds over the last month which I'm happy about. You know this is a marathon not a sprint so it's going to take some time to implement these things to figure out what works and you know it's it's going to involve consistency you know to stick with it over the long haul and that's that's part of the journey and that's the fun in the journey is implementing good habits that allow you to remain healthy and to be healthy for as long as possible. Now, if you're interested in my rest and healing video, I want you to check it out. I have left the link in the description below. I also want to encourage you to grab my free pause and prepare health guide. I have left the link uh, in the description and it is a health guide for women who are in the perimenopausal stage of their life who just want to understand what perimenopause and menopause is if there's anything you can do ahead of time to get ahead of the game or if you're currently in the stages what can I do or what can you do to kind of alleviate some of the symptoms you might be feeling the symptoms are the vasomotor symptoms of perimenopause and menopause vary they can include night sweats hot flashes but they also include things like tingling or itching of the ears they can also include things like anxiety or depression and there are ways in which you can help alleviate these symptoms which I want you to be aware of it's always good to be aware of things that you're going through at a particular age and how to remedy those particular instances of feeling uncomfortable or not knowing what's going on with your body so I do encourage you to pick up that guide when you pick up the guide you join my pause and prepare newsletter mailing list I'm ramping up on a, a monthly perhaps weekly mailing list that I plan to share with you all completely for free. And I also encourage you to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this video or if you like the content that I am providing to you. I'm open to your recommendations for anything you want to watch on the channel or you'd like to see on the channel. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.